so suppose i am taking the example of uh, you know the first case case 1 we are assuming where for the coordination number 4 case 1 we are taking for all those complexes whose coordination number number is 4 coordination number 4 for example the first question we are discussing here is for this ni cl4 2 minus okay ni cl4 2 minus is found to be found to be paramagnetic paramagnetic with two unpaired electron unpaired electron explain its hybridization hybridization and geometry okay now you see how to do this question how to solve this question okay solution right first of all the information we should have to solve this question is the nature of the ligand nature of ligand and ligand here is chlorine which is nothing but chlorine here cl minus right and cl minus is a weak ligand this is the information i am giving now which ligand is weak or is strong that we'll understand later on when we do the crystal field splitting right for the time being i'll give you the nature of the ligand whether it is weak or strong okay we know from the postulates of vbt that in case of strong ligand there will be a pairing of electrons in the atomic orbital against the hunts rule right if the ligand is weak such kind of pairing against the hunts rule is not possible correct so the first thing is this you should know whether the ligand is weak or is strong second thing is the oxidation state of metal so oxidation state of metal you see here chlorine is minus 1 minus 4 minus 2 we have already this nickel has plus 2 oxidation state here. okay so oxidation state of metal here is plus 2 so what i'll do i'll just first draw the electronic configuration of nickel nickel we know the atomic number is 28 and its configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 3d8 since electronic configuration since the oxidation state is plus 2 so the electronic configuration of ni plus 2 will be we have to take two electron out and that comes out from the outermost shell which is the 4s shell correct and that is why the electronic configuration of ni2 plus is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 and 3d okay now when i draw the orbital diagram here okay so you see the orbital diagram here it is 3d this is 3d 1 2 3 4 
this one is 4s and next we have 4p okay and the number of electron these are 3d shell and this is 4s and this is 4p correct so now the number of electrons in uh, 3d subshell is 8 so we'll have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 4s and 4p orbitals are vacant empty correct now how many orbitals these metal require this metal require to bond with four chlorine ligands four chlorine chloride ion the number of bonds number of vacant orbital required is nothing but the coordination number of uh, the metal okay so coordination number of metal is nothing but four because it is attached with four monodentate ligand correct so four chlorine atom you can simply understand this one like this that we have four chlorine atoms so nickel is here in the center and the four chlorine atom is trying to donate its electron right to the metal to form a coordinate bond like this okay so to accept this pair of electron we must need four orbitals because one chlorine atom uh, uh, donates one pair of electron the so four pair of electron we uh, nickel has to accept and for that we required four vacant orbitals now to form four vacant orbitals four atomic orbitals must go under hybridization right four atomic orbitals must go under hybridization and it forms four hybridized orbital one two three and four and what kind of hybridization we have here since one s and three p orbital goes into hybridization so we call it as sp3 hybridization correct now in this sp3 hybridized orbitals the four chlorine atom donates its pair of electron and forms coordinate bond with the metal okay hence the hybridization of nicl4 the hybridization is hybridization is sp3 and with sp3 hybridization the geometry of the complex is tetrahedral tetrahedral and magnetic property if you think if you think about the magnetic property of this complex since there are two unpaired electron so it is para magnetic in nature okay suppose if the electron suppose the ligand is strong then the pairing of electron takes place against the Hunt's rule. Okay, so for that also we'll do one, um, you know, uh, one example for a strong ligand. We'll try to understand. Okay, so I hope this example is clear. Okay, so by with the help of VBT valence bond theory, we can actually find out hybridization geometry and magnetic property. Okay, so the next one you see. We are considering the another molecule, which is this. The question is NiCO4, NiCO4. NiCO4 is diamagnetic. It is given is diamagnetic. explain its hybridization and 
geometry. Explain its hybridization and geometry. Now you see the solution of this molecule, of this question. Okay. The first thing we should know is what? The nature of ligand. What is the nature of ligand? What is the ligand we have here? Ligand is carbonyl group that is CO. C O. Oh, it's not cobalt. Take care of this. And this is a strong ligand. Right? Again, I'm telling you this information I'm giving you. Cobalt CO is a strong ligand. Generally, carbon, when the ligand has carbon atom donor or nitrogen atom donor, then those ligands are considered as strong ligands in general. Okay? But how do we know which one is strong or weak? That we'll discuss in crystal field theory after this. Okay? After this VBT. Correct? So nature of ligand is a strong then the oxidation state of the metal oxidation state is zero because this ligand is neutral also neutral ligand and to find out this oxidation state of the metal you should know the charge on the ligand that is also important okay last example if you see we have nicl4 so chloride ion we have cl minus that is a negative charge ligand okay so um so that's why that is you know um, negative charge ligand so and if you know the charge on the ligand you can find out the oxidation state of the metal to find out oxidation state of the metal you should know the charge on the ligand also this is neutral so no charge oxidation state of the metal is zero now the same thing again nickel has 28 electrons and the oxidation state state is zero so the configuration of this is again 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and 3d8. Orbital diagram, if I draw here, you see, orbital diagram, we have a 3d subshell has 8 electrons, 4s has 2. And after this 4p, which is vacant, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Number of electrons present, you see, 3d has 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and this has 2 electrons. Like this, if you are filling the electrons 1, 2, 3, 1 by 1, it means you are following the Hunt's rule. Okay? But that Hunt rule is not applicable here because the ligand is strong. In case of strong ligand, there will be pairing against the Hunt rule. One more thing what you can do that all these electrons you can fill directly 2, 4, 6, 8 like that also you can do. Okay. And another way is what the two, uh, the unpaired electron present here gets paired. Why? Because the ligand is strong. So one electron from 4S jumps over here. And again, the another electron jumps over here and this orbital becomes empty and this orbital becomes completely filled. So this converts into this one. And then we have 4s and this is 4p, right? So 1, 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. And these three orbitals are empty. So this is 3d orbital. This is 3D, this is 4S, and this is 4P. Now, again, the same thing, since the coordination number is 4, coordination number is 4, it means we require 4 hybrid orbitals. And to get 4 hybrid orbitals, 4 atomic orbitals combines, and these atomic orbitals must be vacant so that it can accept the pair of electron which is coming from the ligand, correct? So NiCO4, these three, four orbitals combines and forms four hybrid orbital. One, two, three, and four. This is the hybrid orbital. And what kind of hybridization it is? It is again 1s and 3p. So four sp3 hybridized orbital, which is completely vacant. And the ligand 
donates pair of electron to these orbital and forms a coordinate bond. Hence, since the hybridization is sp3, right? To summarize this, what we can write that hybridization of this. Uh, now, to summarize this, hybridization of this molecule is sp3 sp3 geometry is tetrahedral and and the magnetic property magnetic property since all electrons are paired you see it is diamagnetic diamagnetic in nature so like this you can understand the magnetic behavior hybridization and geometry one more question we'll see here for coordination number four suppose Suppose we have a molecule, say, NiCN4, 2 minus. We need to find out, we need to find out the hybridization. hybridization next is geometry next is magnetic property these three things we need to find out again you see what all things we should know here the nature of ligand ligand is what cn minus and it is a strong ligand Cn minus is a strong ligand. You should memorize this. It is a negative charge ligand also. Negative charged. And if it is negative charge, the oxidation state of nickel, if you calculate it, is plus 2. So oxidation state of metal is plus 2. Nickel atomic number is again 28. Configuration is argon. 4s2 3d8 electronic configuration of ni plus 2 is argon then 3d8 there's no electron in 4s uh, shell okay so you see next here uh, orbital diagram if i draw this is 3d 4s and next is 4p. 3d has 8 electrons. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 4s has 0 electron. Right. But since the ligand is strong, right. So this electron jumps over here and pairing takes place against the unstroke. Why? Because we have strong ligand. So in this you see what happens. Here we have 2, 4, 6, 8. So one d orbital is vacant now. Right? Again the coordination number is what? The coordination number is 4. It means we required 4 vacant orbital. 4 atomic orbital combines and forms the hybrid orbital. So we have 1d, 1s and 2p. So we'll get 4 hybrid orbital here. 1, 2, 3 and 4. And what kind of hybridization? dsp2. Right? Because 1d, 1s and 2p involved. So dsp2 hybridization. Okay. So now to write down the answer for this. 
hybridization is what dsp2 and dsp2 hybridization means the geometry is a square planar and magnetic properties since all the electrons are paired so it is diamagnetic it is diamagnetic one type of question also they ask that what is the d which d orbital because there are five d orbitals no so in this geometry in this hybridization dsp2 what like which d orbital is involved over here okay so for that i'll write down just one table here okay and uh, you see this geometry first of all on one side the other side the d orbital involve okay so geometry if it is the geometry if it is a square planet square planar involves d x square y square orbital if it is trigonal bipyramidal tbp trigonal bipyramidal the d orbital involved is d z square if it is a square pyramidal if it is square pyramidal then it is d x square y square if it is octahedral then the orbital involves are dz square and dx square y square okay these few things you must remember this type of question they have asked many times in the exam especially this hybridization magnetic property geometry and all this kind of question they have asked. The most important part in this we have for the coordination number six. Okay. So four we have discussed. We'll discuss five next, and then we'll discuss for the same thing for coordination number six. Okay. So one type of question related to this hybridization geometry magnetic properties. The another type is which d orbital involved in this. Uh, various geometry okay so we are done with the coordination number four next session we'll start with coordination number five and six thank you very much